Ladies and gentlemen, good morning and welcome back to fishing. It is crack of dawn right now and we are about to get out and spot. We got out yesterday and did all right. Caught some fish, nothing too, too big. Uh, we got a nice large mouth, nice small mouth, uh, lake trout, lost a few other trout uh, and fish. It's kind of slow. I think part of it was, was because the water was kind of dirty. Uh, we had a lot of rain on Friday, so yesterday was kind of yucky out there. So today we're going to try and get out there again and see if uh, there's any change in the water clarity. Yes, it's been pretty nice the last couple days and see if we can uh, have a better day. And if we do, you will be the first to see it. I'll see you out there soon. Stay tuned. All right, into the abyss. We got a bit of fog, but it's okay because we got our GPS going. Battery's pretty much fully charged. And we're going to get out the spot. We've got a little bit of a pedal ahead of us, which is expected. Don't have a lot of time. We got enough time now. We're not going to deal with any Lakers today. We're just getting right out to the, sh to the shallows, fishing, I don't know, anywhere from five to at most 20 feet of water. Do a combination of jigging Kitex and twitching Rapalas. And if that doesn't work, we'll get creative. See you out there soon. All right, worked up a good sweat. We're just about to the first spot. First thing we're going to throw is a Kitex Easy Shiner with a 1 10th ounce Ned style chartreuse jig head. This uh, Easy Shiner is about three and a half inches, which I find to be just the right size. Not too small, not too big, uh, particularly for this time of year when the fish are starting to get a bit more active. Though the water is still quite cold here. I mean, it's barely probably out of the 40s, low 50s at best. Let's see how this goes. All right, let's see if we can work up with the Kitek. Right now we're in about, we're sitting on top of about 17 feet of water and it quickly kind of drops off to that from the shoreline where I think it gets to about five or so. We got like a rock wall action and then it really shallows out here to like a little point which I really enjoy. So it's a good place to start. Fish on. All right, we're getting a quick start today, so that's good. First fish. Not a bad one. All right, we're going to switch things up. This time we're going to try the same spot with a Rapala Shadow Wrap. Uh, this has been my go-to lure the last couple days, specifically yesterday. And we're going to see if this can do the trick over here. There he is. What's that? Is that a trout? That looks like a trout. That's a rainbow. I knew they were around. I don't think he'll measure up, but cool. A little stocky. And I'm actually surprised we got the, the bump. from bump to tail. He's 15 inches. He's actually 15 and a half, so that will pad out dinner. We're gonna keep him and he will make for a catch clean cook video coming soon. We just got our little stocky rainbow trout. I don't plan on keeping too, too many of these things. If I get one more, I'll keep it just to really pad out dinner. We're keeping them today, but typically we would be letting these things go, at this size especially. Back to the Kitek. Here comes the fog. Definitely glad to have the fish finder today and the GPS. Otherwise we would be just stumbling around in the dark. High tech fish. Is that another trout. Laker. We got a Laker shaker. Shaken Lake. 
Hell yeah, I'll take that. I'll take that. Now we really got a dinner. Cool. Trout Central. Not huge, but definitely dinner. All right, so there's our rainbow trout. It's not a big one, but uh, it's a good start for our catch and cook. So we're gonna clean this in a second. Uh, one thing I will say before we get started, um, this is actually one of the few fish that I might actually do more than one video for. So this is clearly a fish that was recently stocked. Um, a lot of the rainbow trout that you'll find across this country, particularly in this region, uh, were originally stocked um, far outside of their original range, which I can't say off the top of my head. Uh, but that information is out there. But that being said, uh, when these fish are fresh out of the hatchery, the characteristics that you might find in the meat might not be exactly the same as the fish that have been, for lack of better term, naturalized or even native, you know, the offspring of these fish. So with that being said, I am going to uh, clean this, cook it, and give my analysis. But this actually, again, depending on where I catch later rainbow trout, you know, knock on wood that we catch more, um, it might be a different experience. So this is the stocky experience. So I don't even know when the last time I kept a rainbow trout was. I think it was probably when I was in college. So with that being said, um, this is something I haven't done in quite a while. So let's get in there. So we're gonna clean this very similar, I'd imagine, to how we cleaned the, the lake trout. So we're just gonna cut right above. Just follow that spinal cord. This is definitely much firmer than the lake trout, I will say that. Um, this meat is nowhere near as soft in terms of initial impressions. Uh, it's quite a bit firmer. I'm kind of surprised, to be honest. All right, and just trace that to the tail. And as you'll notice, the meat is white. It is not colored in any color whatsoever, unlike the lake trout that was orange. I'd imagine if this fish had been in the lake a bit longer, it might have picked up some color, perhaps. All right, we're gonna do the same thing over here. Just going to cut there, follow the spine. Now, get in there. We did bleed this fish, so hopefully that cleans up the meat a little bit. Simple enough. Same thing on this side. And we'll just clean out some of the, that meat that got left behind. All right, so we are in the kitchen right now. We have our finished fillets right here. One thing you'll note, we did get that lake trout. So we have the lake trout on this side, the rainbow trout on this side. We are not gonna really cook the lake trout. We might cook one tiny little piece here, not tiny, but small piece, just as kind of a baseline to compare the stock rainbow. Um, but just if I didn't highlight the highlight this before. This is a stock rainbow trout, probably spent most of its life in a hatchery. It's really not unlike what you would see at the supermarket when you see all the trout lined up um, on the display at the seafood section. So that is essentially what we are about to cook right now. And we'll give a, I'll make sure to give you my honest and unbiased opinion. All right, so we're gonna throw the smaller pieces on first while the pan kind of heats up, so. Just throw in some small piece of, of uh, rainbow trout in the pan. Nothing on the pan but butter. Uh, and that's about it, keeping it simple. That's just the stuff we kind of got off the carcass. And this isn't a big fish. I'm gonna be lazy and just throw it all on at once. So I could probably split this into two, two good cooking sessions. There's one big filet. There's two, and just to make this interesting, Here's one piece of lake trout that we're gonna throw in there. And we're just gonna set it there and give it a few minutes until it cooks all the way through. Look at that fish sizzle. Got a little salt pepper on there. If I didn't mention before, we kept the skins in the bottom. Uh, that way, if you did wanna grill this, you could. Plus I find that the trout skins, nothing too, you know, tough about them. They generally hold together pretty nice. And the scales aren't obnoxious. All right, I think we're about good here. So we're gonna take our finished rainbow trout. Oops, breaking apart a little. It's all right. Get it right on the plate like so. And there we go. 
All right, so excuse the background noise. We're gonna dig into this like this uh, rainbow trout. Sorry, definitely a uh, a little bit lighter than the lake trout was. A little hot. All right, so I had to, to take another bite off camera and just think about this a bit. Um, it's definitely not bad, it's, it's good. Uh, the texture is a little bit different than the lake trout, where the lake trout kind of has that really buttery, kind of firm feel. This feels a little bit more, I don't know, I, don't, I almost want to say mushy, but that's not the right word. It's not as firm. It's not as flaky. Uh, it's good, make no mistake, and it doesn't have much flavor. I think a lot of that has to do with its upbringing. I would imagine if this fish had spent a bit more time in the lake or, you know, if it were wild caught rainbow, uh, not wild, but, you know, been in the lake a bit longer, or even a native rainbow, you'd have a different taste uh, and texture consistency. But overall, I mean, this is what you're going to get when you go to the store and ask for rainbow trout. Uh, it's going to be very similar to this, and it's not bad. Um, you could smoke this probably too. That would be probably a bit more interesting or throw in the grill. But if you were to cook it like this, you know, pretty good. Um, eat with some vegetables, rice, etc. It's not offensively fishy or anything. So overall, definitely something to, to check out. And these are fairly accessible to catch when you are out and about. So that is stocky rainbow trout. Now I see what the, the hype is about when people are out in the streams on April 1st when they're trying to catch all the, the trout and immediately get them home. So I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, this is our third episode and I'm hoping to get a few more coming soon with some more differentiated species, but I hope that you are enjoying these catch and cooks, catch clean cooks, and there will be more to come. Uh, you know what to do if you like the video. See you later.